Today, we will take a detailed look at a vintage Ward Airline television. The airline brand was sold by Montgomery Ward of Chicago, a company founded by Aaron Montgomery Ward in 1872. This tabletop model dates from around 1948, which was a very important time in television history. The period 1948 to 1959 is often called the Golden Age of Television, reflecting its historic expansion. Many improvements had been made in vacuum tube electronics during World War II. However, U.S. production of TVs and radios for civilian use was banned in 1942 and not resumed until late 1945. At that time, there were fewer than 10,000 TV sets in use. By late 1948, there were over 1 million sets in use, with over 30 broadcasting stations. In 1948, the average TV sold for around $400, which was equivalent to over $4,600 today. Families and friends would often get together to watch TV, since not every family could afford to own one. The tabletop TVs became popular and more affordable as the number of available programs skyrocketed from 1948 to 1959. This Ward Airline set was found completely intact and is a candidate for restoration. In its mahogany case, it weighs 26 pounds. The model number is 94BR3017B. It is a VHF receiver only, providing channels 2 through 13. It uses 18 vacuum tubes, including the 7-inch round picture tube. Access to the internals is relatively simple. With back plate, bottom screws, and knobs taken off, the chassis slides out the back of the case. A helpful tube chart was located in several different locations inside and under the set. Removing the metal underplate gives access to most of the wiring and components. This model is 17 inches wide, 16 and a half inches deep, and 10 inches high. The entire set is surprisingly clean for being nearly 75 years old. The mechanical channel tuner has a very impressive, almost military-type ruggedness. The 19-page photo fact brochure provides a listing of all the capacitors and other components that may need to be tested and replaced. The AC power cord was completely frayed and was replaced before the first power-on test was done. The set takes about 12 seconds to warm up. A video test using a VCR analog signal pushed through the TV antenna input did not produce any picture. The sound did come through but with major static due to control knob issues. The CRT picture tube is held down by two straps and the end cap connector. Removal is relatively easy, but should be done with caution. The CRT is of the electrostatic deflection type, which use deflection plates to control the electron beam. 
These were mostly used for screen sizes 10 inches or smaller. By the early 1950s, electrostatic deflection technology was being replaced by electromagnetic deflection, which allowed for larger screen sizes with shorter tube length. Most all TV and computer CRT displays from the early 1950s onward used electromagnetic deflection technology. For comparison, here is the CRT next to a smaller RCA tube from a 1958 oscilloscope. Next is a 2-inch CRT from a 1959 Philco Safari transistor TV, along with its electromagnetic deflection yoke. The Safari was the world's first all-transistor portable TV. Lastly, a German-made Telefunken CRT from the Sinclair Micro TV of 1978. Television was still considered experimental in 1948. Radio remained the number one broadcast medium and home entertainment source until the 1950s. There were four major full-time TV networks, NBC, CBS, Dumont, and ABC. Here are their early network identification spots. NBC Television. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is the Newborn Television Network. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. During the late 1940s and 1950s, there was a growing range of television manufacturers and styles. Here are some examples. This is station WCHAP, operating at 150,000 kilowatts on a frequency of 97 megahertz, concluding our broadcast. We are signing off the air. We will be back on the air at 6 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow morning. Good evening.